It's not an exaggeration to say that it's the most difficult time since before the dawn of the industry. Were the words uttered in a now deleted editorial by the state-owned China real estate newspaper. Over the past several decades, the world has witnessed a roller coaster of changes. Take China for instance. China has evolved from a slow-growing, poor and shattered country to now the fastest-growing economic power in the world. Economic experts worldwide are constantly arguing about trends of economic growth. However, they can all agree that it may only be a matter of time before China will dethrone the United States as the world's largest economy. While China's rise to prominence in an overnight fashion may be actual, this is not to say that it will stay that way. China is facing much economic turbulence, and warning alarms are sounding off on numerous fronts. It's a race against the clock. China is suffering just about any economic woe a nation can face. You've got COVID-19 policy trouble, a bursting housing bubble, massive income inequality, and a record number of young graduates fresh out of university with no jobs available on the market. Unemployment is through the roof. Experts are sure there's not much chance that China will nail its goal of 5.5% GDP for 2022. China's government and its president, Xi Jinping, are not doing much to help the situation by targeting the private sector and restricting capital and free market growth. Investors are in a panic over China's zero-COVID policy that has about a quarter of its population under devastating lockdowns. According to an analysis by Bloomberg, the data for July suggests confidence is collapsing among China's business and households. But something that has China sweating bullets is a factor that will have severe consequences on its long-term prosperity. China, for the first time, is seeing its population begin to shrink. China is in serious trouble if it can't correct this downward spiral. So, is all hope lost for China and its failing economy? Is there enough time to slow the downward trend and salvage a shattered economy? With China's back to the wall, will they be forced to act out in desperation to preserve its legacy? We'll cover this and more in this video as we explore the mess China has found itself in and what it is trying to do to correct the course of a collapsing economy. It's sad, but most of China's woes are self-inflicted. China is desperately attempting economic policy course correction, but some say it may be too late. But I'll tell you what's not too late. It's not too late to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to catch the latest in an ever-evolving, rapid change of pace in the global economy. Don't forget to click that notification bell so you never miss a beat. Let's dive right in. The Headaches of Common Prosperity The nation of China's full name is the People's Republic of China, but China is a republic only by name. The Chinese Communist Party, or as it's officially known, the Communist Party of China, is the founding party and sole ruling party of the state. A common theme in communist ideology is equality and doing away with social class. Of course, China hasn't taken it to that extreme extent, but they're coming close. Xi Jinping, China's leader, enacted a common prosperity campaign. Common prosperity has emerged as one of China's most influential policy-making guides over the year. President Xi Jinping has stated that he would commit to reducing income inequality and promoting a people-centered society. Xi's idea is to raise the income of lower-income groups in China and promote a fair economy that will make regional development more balanced. Xi has pledged to reasonably regulate excessively high incomes and encourage high-income people and enterprises to return more to society. While that may be great for ideology, it's detrimental to the economy. The most apparent sign of that is the 180 economic policy course corrections of Xi's Common Prosperity Campaign. At the start of the year, many in political circles praised the principle of common prosperity. However, you won't hear a word of it uttered after massive regulation and crackdowns on the private tech sector, a crackdown that analysis say cost China's economy over $1.5 trillion. Xi has been scrambling to reassure global investors that the common prosperity campaign wasn't absolute. The idea wasn't to force society into egalitarianism, but instead as a guideline to ensure that the vulnerable parts of the population wouldn't be left behind. China has stated that it remains open for business. Investors aren't so sure about that. The common prosperity campaign has all but ceased to be. Even Xi Jinping realizes that the policy has rattled investors and companies worldwide, almost as much as it has at home in China. Xi attempted to calm everyone by stating, we will first make the pie bigger and then divide it properly through reasonable institutional arrangements. Emphasis on the bigger pie. Beijing is pivoting in the right direction. The only concern is whether or not it's too late. The actions needed to heal the self-inflicted economic wounds are drastic and almost out of reach. It doesn't take much to see the writing on the wall. Beijing is uneasy, nervous, and on edge. The future has never been more uncertain. The only thing more uncertain is how they will return the economy to stability. 
Are the changes in the policy too little too late? It's hard to tell if any policy correction China enacted is paying off just yet. Earlier this year, the top 100 largest property firms saw a 53% decline in sales year on year. Before that sharp dip at the start of the year, China already saw drops in that same range. Property sales are one of China's critical aspects of its economy, so you can believe that the news, a drop of 60% in the volume of land sales in over 300 cities, has China scrambling to look for remedies. Some of China's largest real estate companies, such as Evergrande, have yet to submit audited financial results. Many are speculating why China is allowing these real estate giants to keep their books closed. Perhaps there's information inside that Xi Jinping doesn't want to get out. Getting a clear financial picture of what's going on behind the scenes remains challenging. So all in all, confidence in the private sector business is nowhere near being restored. Investors remain fearful that China's instability is only getting started. With all the red flag warnings, Beijing keeps bearing down on the tech industry and isn't showing many signs of making a bounce back anytime soon. If at all. What's coming next? There's a great struggle for the soul happening deep in China. Xi Jinping has gotten China's underlying economic and foreign policy dead wrong, with multiple short-term and long-term miscalculations. Political analysts are wondering if Xi's hunger for personal political legitimacy will cause him to double down. With the economy doing so poorly, it's no wonder that there is profoundly political and social unrest at home. International challenges worldwide aren't helping the situation. But in times of crisis, Xi has found success in his command to call considerably on deep nationalist sentiment. This time, he will have to dig even deeper. President Xi Jinping, China's man of history, has many worried that such a nationalism is dangerous in the already tense geopolitical situation. Xi is becoming increasingly assertive in the region, especially against the United States and its special interest. Taiwan is an excellent example of both sides taking more calculated risks to preserve their special interest. Xi may view this as an existential threat to his legacy and may decide to act hastily and pit China directly against the United States. The tension is real. Our world is dangerously close to the edge as weakening economies, skyrocketing inflation, soaring energy prices, and high grain costs push us closer to desperation. Now more than ever, we need our leaders to practice diplomatic solutions to help get us through this mess. Presidents Biden, Putin, and Xi Jinping aren't necessarily playing ball. This decade will be one of the most telling of the century. So what do you think? Is this desperation enough to bring us closer to a start of a third world war? Or maybe China's policy correction will be enough to pull its economy out of the gutter? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And thanks for tuning in and watching. We've got a lot more great content coming your way, and trust us, you won't want to miss this.